Well, hello, my friends. Kevin, the comic doctor, coming to you with another edition of One on One. And boy, a lot to talk about today as CGC announces yet another price increase. Hey, guys, I'm Kevin, the comic doctor. I'm a comic book presser. I'm also a CGC authorized dealer located way up in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. And uh, usually I come on here sharing tons of awesome books with you guys, doing live unboxings. Hopefully another one will happen this week. I still haven't gotten a box this week. It's kind of a quiet week, which is really strange. There are boxes on the way. They just have not arrived yet. But that being said, I'm here today to talk to you about yet again another CGC price increase. I'm here to talk about that with all of you. Go over the different tiers now because tiers have been changed. They've changed the names of the tiers. They've changed the prices of the tiers. Um, some things have remained the same. Um, you know what? Actually, now that I think about it, well, you know what? I'm showing things to you in, in Canadian funds. So, well, my, my prices, maybe I will, uh, I think I have my old, yeah, here, right here. So my own copy i'll see if i can get the cgc one called up uh on 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 the screen for you to see as well but uh we're going to talk about that today too guys and i'm also going to talk about the quality control issue that i've been facing with cgc over the last several weeks let you know what's happening uh in regards to that and your comics as well that it has affected approximately 20 to 25 of my clients in the last few weeks so i want to talk to you all about that as well so sit back relax here we go i'll go over to the chat and say hi to you guys Again, if you have any questions about anything we're talking about today, by all means, come on over to our chat, join in the fun, ask the questions, happy to answer the questions if I can. But again, there's a caveat there, you must subscribe in order to participate in our chat. So hit that subscribe button, and while you're at it, hit the like button and that notification bell as well, so you know when I do go live in future. And you know what, by doing that, it helps the analytics here, my analytics here on YouTube, and lets more people know about me, the comic doctor, and brings more people to our community. Okay, so let's talk a little bit first about the... Um, uh, the elephant in the room, which is the which is the uh, the quality control problems. Now, if you've been watching my unboxings over the last several weeks, you know that um, you know that unfortunately a lot of the slabs have been coming back with these micro I call them micro cracks or you know um, hairline cracks on the edges of the slabs and this has been going on on and off for the last several months the first time I noticed it was with a rather rather large high-end order back in January and those books all went back then I started noticing them more and more um, so much so that unfortunately a lot of people's books are being affected by it first was five or six then it was seven or eight and sometimes almost entire boxes were coming back with these hairline cracks now listen like i said some people don't give a damn about these cracks some people ah, i don't mind a little crack ain't gonna hurt anybody i'll keep going i will go back on that comment a little a little, a little crack ain't gonna hurt anybody well i'll tell you some people are very finicky about their slabs about their comic books and uh they will be finicky about it and for my my clients that are resellers and a lot of my clients are resellers any little blemish on the slab can cause uh, uh, you can lose a sale basically or cause a buyer to try to negotiate a much lower price because of a minor little imperfection so i contacted cgc i asked their advice first i kind of went back and forth a little bit kind of went back they said oh you know we'll um the, the everything looks fine from our end these cracks are are so are so small it'll pass our quality control but then uh, within a couple of days they changed their tune and said send all the books back so that's exactly what I've been doing, guys. I've sent probably two huge bundles of books back to CGC. Last Monday, three more full boxes went back. That's about approximately, it was actually about 50 books, not, not three full boxes, but almost three. It was three, you know, three boxes almost full of slabs. One client said they, they were happy with the books the way they are, so I pulled them out and they kept them as is. But everybody else's books I sent down. So... The good news is this, if you recall my last unboxing, I did that box of nine, a lot of nine eights in that pre-screen. Those were Steve's books. And all of Steve's books did not have any problems. And that was the last box I received. So, hope springs eternal. I'm praying that that is an indicator that the boxes that are on their way back right now will not have any more um, cracks in them. Uh, the only problem now, it's a waiting game. I know I see Patrick's out there. I know John's here. Pat's here. I sent a bunch of Pat's books back. James is here. I sent a bunch of your books back as well, James. You know, I hope it's not going to be five months before we get them back. 
I contacted uh, Crystal, who I've been dealing with over at CGC, and she said that it's not looking too bad. However, they've been getting a lot of... Um, how can I say this? A lot of people sending books back using the mechanical error um, avenue when they shouldn't be doing so, and it's been causing them a lot of a big slowdown because they're tr they're, they're going through each order one by one and deciphering which orders are legitimately mechanical errors and which ones are not. And she said that's been taking them a lot of time. So here we go. I can tell you this much: Mike, whose books were the ones I sent originally, those I think were going those were December, January, and they're still not back yet. So, oh my Lord, I hope this is not going to be, guys, I swear, I hope it's not going to be six months. I do promise, though, if it starts becoming a really long wait time, uh, I will... Um I will uh, certainly contact them and start harassing them, but they've been they've been pretty amazing CGC in regards to fixing the problem. But the fact that they let these 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 books go out in the, in the first place, not good. I also noticed on Facebook a lot of uh, people are and I, I I posted a lot of information about this, and other people are saying they also have received books with these exact same you know hairline cracks on them. So it's 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 an epidemic, I'm afraid, and uh, we unfortunately were hit with it, um, and hopefully we're not going to see any more of it. I am going to go over to the chat in just a second. First, I want to go to the CGC's website. I actually put up my Comic Doctor website, which is not what I wanted. I want you to see this in from the uh, CGC's point here. Let me see if I can. You know, that might work. One sec here. Let me just fix this uh, browser. Oh, that works. That works. Okay. Um, let's go over to the chat window quick and see who's here. I'll say hello, then I'll go over and we'll start discussing the new changes. Oh, we got Lord Lord Foth is here, our, our trusty moderator. Hello, Lord Foth. Greetings. Digital Man is here. Hello, comic book collectors. Uh, uh, Herb1211 is here. Uh, like I said, James is here. How you doing? Brian Bowman's in the house. How you doing, Brian? Good to see you. Pat Sherwood, of course, and John as well. Changing the tiers and leading to more tiers. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you about that in just one moment. Um... And Neil Sharma said, do you suggest paying for CCS to press it in addition to you in case it helps? You mentioned something about an ASM 300 recently. I... Uh the ASM 300 was a 9.6 that I did not want to crack myself. I don't, I don't love cracking 9.6 books. Oh, there's one here I'm going to crack, but it's not a super huge, you know, high, high value book. Um, nine sixes scare me because they can go up one or they can go down a little bit. And I just rather not. So it was Travis's ASM 300. I recommended and the book looked quite beautiful. I suggested he send it to CCS and let them do it. It did. It came back a nine, eight, but if I'm pressing a book, there's no real need for CCS to press the book after I've pressed the book. Um, yeah, there isn't. So you can do it if you want to. It's a lot of money, but I wouldn't do that. Uh, Bruhaha says, hello, Dave House says, have you, have they been able to trace the source of the hairline crack? So they've told me absolutely nothing. I'm only guessing. And you know what? Honestly, initially I thought it was a FedEx problem, but actually it was, I forget who it was out on, out in the, out in the, uh, in, in, in chat world there, one of you guys suggested it might've been something that was taking place during the process of encapsulation. And the more I thought about it, the more I put two and two together, I, I, I figured that's exactly what it was. And now that I'm hearing from other people that they're receiving the exact same problems with their slabs, I'm, I'm betting on it that it's a problem with, with the actual uh, process of encapsulation. And I hope, like I said, I hope they figured this out once and for all. Uh, my mechanical errors are scheduled for grading. Yes, so are all of mine, Rob, all of mine as well. Herb1211 says, Kevin, did you ask Crystal from CGC to look into these minute minute cracks? Did she mention they were going to look? Oh yeah, 100%. They said they were gonna look into it, but they told me absolutely nothing about it. They didn't tell me, they didn't tell me how they were gonna look into it. They didn't tell me how they're gonna rectify any problems. They just said they're gonna look into it. Uh, if, there, if there's a problem, they're going to fix it. But they didn't say, oh, Kevin, the problem was this. No, no, there was no admission that the problem was an encapsulation. Again, I'm only, I'm only assuming that was the problem. I could be wrong. I don't think I am wrong. Um, yeah, but... I have a feeling they were getting a lot of books back for the same reason, because like I said, I heard from other people, another big dealer here also told me he had the exact same problem and he has a huge eBay store. And because of that, he, he knew he had to have his, 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 his slabs fixed. Hey, Stuart, how's it going? Spiro's here. How you doing, Spiro? It was me who said, okay, yeah, Rob, I thought so. It, Rob brought that up weeks ago. And as soon as he said it, I'm like, you know what? Maybe he's freaking, he's onto something. And sure enough, 
again, Rob, we're only assuming that, right? But I, it makes total sense, right? Because the same, the same crack, the exact same kind of crack in the exact same place, box after box after box. And what really kind of, what really kind of, you know, kind of solidified that idea for me was the fact that I got a box back with the slabs upside down in the box and still the same problem. Still the same problem. You'd think that the top of the slab would be cracked. It wasn't. It was the exact same spot. So that kind of told me, yeah, this is 100% encapsulation problem, okay? If any questions about, if your books are some of those books that I've had to send back, and guys, I'm gonna tell you, I appreciate those of you that this has affected. I appreciate you not contacting me through text or email, asking questions about it. I texted every single person whose books were affected um, to please be patient. There and and, and, and and by the way, I have some of you have books here because some orders had one book affected, some orders had several books affected. Um, so some people have partial orders here. If you want to pick up half your order or a book, you can. Um, I'd prefer if you wait for them all to come back, but if you want to pick up books, you're more than welcome to. Just give me a heads up. You know the routine. Um, but it was a lot of work this weekend, guys. I'm not joking. I spent all of Saturday night from like 5 till midnight, and the next morning from like 10 o'clock in the morning till 2 in the afternoon, uh, organizing it, organizing all the books. I had to figure out whose books were go whose first, whose books were whose. Then I had to take them and say, okay, you know, uh, for example, I know Pat had some books in his last one. Pat has, this is Pat's invoice. Pat has four books that are good. And I put them away, put his name on them. And then in his invoice, indicate the other 23 books, whatever, that had to go back. And then make note of that so that when they come back, I know who they belong to. It was, oh my God, guys, a lot of a lot of work. And again, it's very aggravating. I guess shit happens, right? This sort of thing happens. And you know what? If it happens once in a blue moon, you know what? It's it's par for the course. You gotta, it's it's it happens, right? But this is this this is the second time this has happened in less than a month and a half where I've had to spend several hours organizing these mechanical errors. So I hope this is the end of it. So I'm excited to get my um my uh, my next batch of books back because that'll be a good indicator as to what's going on. Oh man, I hope this is the end of it. I, I don't want to see any more cracks. Um, okay, guys, guess what? CGC went ahead and upped their prices, and a lot of people were not happy about it because CGC upped their prices twice last year. It was last year, right? Their prices went up twice last year, and what really stinks as a dealer, as an authorized CGC dealer, what I don't like is that CGC, I found out the same time you found out. There was no notice to me. There was no, hey, Kevin, or hey, dealers, you know, uh, in a month or in two months, there's going to be a price increase. Nothing. No notice. No nothing. And as as you, as you all know, I currently have about a two and a half to three month. You know, I will not touch your books for two and a half to three months. That's how. That's our our leeway lead time into your order. So they gave us two weeks notice. Two weeks notice. May first. That's it. So what am I supposed to do? I had about probably 15 calls yesterday, text calls, emails. Kevin, can my books be done before the price increase? I hope. I can't guarantee anything. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not happy about the fact that I was given absolutely zero notice. I mean, it's, it's really... You know, it, it boggles my mind. Like, I like CGC and I hate CGC because... I don't know. I don't know if they realize the amount of work that we authorized dealers actually do. Like it's a lot of frigging work. So last year when they 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 did two things last year that really kind of angered me. They charged me two hundred dollars US a year. I think it's two hundred a year now to be an authorized. So they charged me to sell their products, which is irritating. Then they reduced our our discount from twenty percent to fifteen percent. So they're, they're, they they want more and they give less and we're busting our nut. I've busted my nuts for this company and I'm not seeing a lot. And then they go and they don't even give me the me or any dealer for that matter the courtesy, the professional courtesy to say, hey, listen, this is going to happen in uh, in two months. Why did they tell? Why did I not know about this in December? So I could have prepared, you know. If I would have known about this in December, I could have told my clients that were coming to me in December, just so you know, your books are going to fall under the new price. I didn't know. How am I supposed to know? Right? I'm not clairvoyant. I'm not, believe it or not. So that was kind of aggravating. So you know what? They really need to treat their, their authorized dealers a little more, you know, I don't know, 
Is the word is respect the word? I don't know, or or treat them more like a partner because I don't feel like a partner. I feel like I'm not going to say the word, but I feel like something else. And you can you can fill in the blanks yourself. But you know, let's go over. I know you you guys want to see um the uh, I got a couple of questions, and then I'll go over to that. I'll, I'll start going over the prices and the new. So they've changed the prices and they've changed. The, the names of the tiers. So let's, but before I do that, we got a couple more questions and I'll go right over there. So uh, Rob says, how many price increases have they Im implemented recently? Uh, this is the first one since last, I want to say last May there was one. And I think there was one just before last May as well. There were two really back-to-back -back increases. Um, they got rid of the value tier, remember? And, and it was really quick. And I was like, what the hell? And for me, it's a pain too, because I got to go into all my software and I got to change all the pricing. It's just it's, it's a headache, right? Um, but it's been three in the last, I'd say in the last year, maybe just the last 14 months, there's been three price hikes, I would say. Um, Brian says, feels like a tough topic to like. Like the messenger and not the man. Well, thank you, exactly. John Wolfgang says, better backlog now than last year. Oh, 100 times better. Last year at this time, last uh, February, yeah, it was like nine months before I'd even get to book some books. Uh, it was bad last year. But last year, I was pretty much doing it alone. I had Charlo helping me a bit. Actually, this time last year, I just moved into the new shop. Charlo was coming on more, taking on more uh, more books, but I was still doing a primarily most of the books myself. Um, so yeah, it, ha it does help to have people working with you. Um, it's a light hate. Yeah, it is a like hate relationship. It's a good company, but things like this, I find, look at, I mean, if all the authorized dealers went bye bye, what would they do? Right? That's what I think. So treat us, treat us with some respect. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not their biggest client. And I know they have clients, dealers that, that don't submit much. I know there are, because I know a lot of guys will get the dealer license just so they can send in their own books. And that's fine. They don't do anybody else's books. They do their own books. They maybe do a hundred, 200 books a year, 300 books a year. And that's it. and they're they, they're called the dealer and they charge those guys, but they got guys like me and I'm sending in 400 500 books a month, which is still by heritage standards or comic link standards not much, but it's still a big chunk. I I my my CGC bill was massive last year, massive, and I think they should look at who their clients are that are doing that. Who who's who's you know who which which of our dealers are producing a lot of sales. And those people should be treated with a little differently than the guy who's doing a, a $200 a year submission. But they don't do that. They just say, okay, everybody's in the same boat. Even when I call now, I call, I talk to customer service, and they're great. But why don't I have a rep? Why don't I have somebody who deals with me? I, why do I have to go through that same rigmarole as anybody to talk to customer service? I should have somebody who's a rep that I call if it's a problem. I should have to go through the same baloney that the average Joe does. That should be a perk of being a dealer. I don't have that. So when guys say, oh, you, you must have inside, uh, you know, you have inside contacts with CGC or you're treated better because you're a dealer. No, no, I'm not. I don't think I am, you know, but I think I should be. I think I should be for the amount of, the amount of books I send down there. I think I should be. And I think any dealer who sends that many books in every year should be given. Hey, look, if somebody's giving your company a hundred thousand plus dollars a year, I think maybe you want to be nice to them and treat them a little bit nicer than other people that maybe send $100 in a year. That's me, I don't know, what do I know? Uh, sports and Heroes, but I su subbed an S, a sil a silver, sorry, a Sports Illustrated magazine during this 2002 WonderCon, 22 WonderCon in Anaheim. Until now, it is still under the grading encapsulation. Yeah, you put it under economy probably. I still have economy books from last, I think January, uh, that are now being finalized over a year yeah so the, the magazines are a whole other thing guys you guys are talking a lot here and that's fantastic i'll come back i do want to talk about the price increase and the name of the to the change of the names and we'll come back to the chat in a second if you haven't subscribed jump in the chat to jump in the chat do that right now and any questions you might have we will get to them when i come back okay let's go and have a look i'm going to show you two things if i can get them both i'm going to show you the cgc prices in american and then for my canadian friends i'm going to show you how i've translated it into on my website or you can go there yourself and check it out uh, as well where is a browser here we go okay so here are the changes um things that really don't apply to me ccs is now or is now called cgc pressing that was a good idea but let's talk about the tiers and, and the service fees. So modern modern tier fee has now changed from 24. See, these changes are really not going to be that detrimental. Really, honestly. Um, 
so anyways, modern tier fee changes from $24 a month to $25 a month. All right, so $24 a month to $25 a month. Month. The economy tier, we're getting rid of that completely. It's going to be called the vintage tier moving forward. And uh, the vintage tier fee is $37. And these are U.S. prices right now, guys. These are the U.S. prices, $37 for the vintage tier. And I think that the economy tier right now, uh, the economy tier, let's see. I think, I'll tell you, I think it's 34, but I could be wrong. Hold on, I'll tell you right now. Um Service and fees. Yeah, the economy tier now, sorry, it's 35. So the so economy tier changes its name to 30 uh, to vintage, and the price goes from $35 to $37. So it goes up two bucks, two US dollars. The standard tier is now called the high value tier, and it is now $85 a month, and that's gone up $5 from $80. So again, not massive, huge changes here. You know, five bucks, if you, if you do like 10, 10 standard books, yeah, it all adds up, I suppose, but it's still not gonna break the bank, I guess. The express tier is gone. No more express. This is where the big change kind of happens. The express tier used to cover books from $1,000 to $3,000. That is no longer the case. Um, and express used to cost $130, okay? So this is the big one, guys. This is the big one. The express tier used to cover books that went from $1,000 a month or sorry, a month, $1,000 to $3,000, okay? The value. Now, that's gone. Any book, any book that's worth more than $1,000 is jumped into the unlimited value tier, which is basically the new name for the walkthrough tier. And where the express tier used to cost $130 US, now the minimum is $150 US. So that's the biggest jump we're seeing. The biggest jump we're seeing is the express tier is gone. And any books that would have been in the express tier previously at $130 are now going to be $150 minimum. Okay, that's the big, so that's a $20 hike. It's a $20 hike on these bigger books. And on top of that, if... If the book is like, uh, no matter what, it's a hundred and fifty dollar minimum fee. But if the book um, is is quite a valuable book, the three percent that used to be associated with walkthrough has been increased to four percent. So again, pretty big jump from three to four percent of fair market value for books that come in higher uh, than a hundred and fifty dollar minimum fee. Okay, so there you go. That's that's the biggest change. The, again, if you're just getting here, the uh, elimination or the, dis the discontinuation of express tier, so that used to cover books from 1,000 to 3,000 is gone. Now, the walkthrough tier is all supreme. The name is changing to unlimited value tier. And the books will start at $150 US minimum per book. And uh, yeah, uh, or a 4% of fair market value, whichever is higher. So all those books that I used to send in for $130, like, you know, Ultimate Fallout 4s, the odd Amazing Spider-Man 300s, the odd ASM 129s, you know, those guys, they are all now, instead of $130, they're minimum going to be $150 or 4% of fair market value, whichever is higher. The reholders have not changed uh, the prices, I mean, of them. So the reholder prices are the same. Uh, the grade pre-screens have gone up to $9 per reject instead of $8 a reject. It was 8 bucks, right? Uh, yeah, now it's $9 a reject. So all you guys who love to do the pre-screen, that price has also gone up. Uh, imaging and custom labels have not changed. Now, the magazines have also changed. For those of you that are getting into magazines right now, uh, modern tier fee change to 25. Uh, what was it before? It, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so the magazine modern tier 
has changed. It's gone down. All right, so we have something going down in value. Wow, amazing. So a modern tier magazine grading goes from $32 uh, a book down to $25 a book. So that actually goes down. Understand, however, the modern tier for magazines takes forever. The economy tier in the magazine uh, uh, service area has been, the name has changed as well to Vintage, and the fee changes to $42 from 30, sorry, $37 from $42. That also goes down a little bit. The standard tier has name has changed uh, uh, to high value. There's no fee changes to standard. I think everybody uses the standard. I know I primarily only offer the standard and walkthrough tier for magazines. But there's so basically the modern tier and economy tier prices have dropped on the magazines. The standard tier is now called high value with no change in the price. And the walkthrough tier has changed its name to unlimited. Same idea, $150 minimum fee or 4% of fair market value, whatever is higher. All the other fee changes are exactly the same as the comics. So there you go, guys. What do you think of, uh, what do you think of these changes? Uh, let's go back to the, to the, um, let's go back to the chat and see what you guys think. That unlimited tier is going to get expensive. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I don't think it's really going to make too much of a difference. I'll tell you the economy turnaround time is down to 30 days. So I'm now offering the economy tier again. So as of the last submission, I'm not sending any more, um, fast track economy. There's no need. Uh, it's 10 days more than the fast track. So I have gone back to my economy as of like the ones I did yesterday. So that's that. So that's a bit of a savings. Um, but yeah, the, the higher end books are going to start costing more. In fact, I'm thinking, geez, I got a couple of, I got an ASM one. I want to regrade. Maybe I should do it now. I don't know. It's just gonna get more. It's going to get more and more expensive every time. Um, 500 books is pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. Four to five hundred a month, you know, we're sending in. Hey, Robert, how's it going? Peter G says, I think I'm thinking submissions have decreased and CGC increasing prices to make up for lower business. Well, listen, everything goes up, Pete. I don't know if it's because the uh um the turn the, the, the when I call this their uh their customer service, they are certainly not saying that they are reducing that they're their workload is decreasing. I thought for a while, maybe it was too, but apparently that is not the case. They are still bustling and they're also, they're also spearheading new divisions. You know, you have the sports cards and the Pokemon cards. Now they're getting into video games. I hear they're getting into uh, actual VHS tapes and that kind of media. So, and those types of collectibles. So I don't know if they're really that slow. I just think everything has gone up. Like I drove down the street and, and the gas is all over the place and food has gone. Everything's gone up. And so cost of living has gone up. So listen, they're cranking their prices up and there's no restrictions as to how much they can do it. And they're going to go up as much as they think is, is doable and feasible. And uh, I don't like it, but it is what it is. Could it be lower business? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Rob says they're dropping the CCS name. It'll be CGCS. I said that already. That's a good thing, I think. Uh, Peter G, the other possible issue is CGC is part of a larger corporation needs to show increased profits on a quarterly basis. Perhaps. Perhaps. Bad Ombre, Mike Sears says, no more 25 book minimum to pre-screen. I can send in one book to pre-screen if wanting. Really? I find that hard to believe. Is that true? I didn't see that. I didn't read that far, though. Let's see. Pressing. Oh, uh, concert posters, signature series. Signature series. Uh, I don't see anything on pre-screen. I didn't see that. I hope you're right. That's cool. Uh, Rob Bin says, you must be t tired, Doc. You said modern tier fee is changing from 24 a month. I know. <laughs> I am tired. It's been a long day, man. It's been a long day. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. Lord Foth, I think that there are reasonable increases. ASM equals Amazing Spider-Man, that's right. Yeah, I mean, look at, I don't like to see things going up. I, I just thought maybe every couple of years, you know, get people used to something. Uh, it feels like it was just yesterday when the prices went up. 
And I find it crazy that they're, they're, uh, the, the market is kind of in a slump. And they, they, they're, they're, you know, I can see when things are booming, like things are going crazy out there to increase the prices. I know there were some pressers in the States that cranked their rates up like the $80, $100 a book. <laughs> right? Kevin, you should increase your prices to $100 a book. And you know what? I would have. I would have. But the only problem was my backlog was so great that I couldn't do that. I wasn't ethical to say, everybody whose books I have right now, I'm going to crank your books up. No, I wouldn't do that, right? That's not the kind of guy I am. And I didn't have anybody else helping me, so I couldn't even offer $100 presses, right? So no, I didn't. But there were guys, I looked at some websites in the States, and guys, had they, they increased their price. They gouged, man. They were increasing their prices like crazy. Um, what else? What else? Uh we're paying them more money and we're getting mechanical errors in return. Spiro, yes. Uh, NL says, what does CGC use to determine the value? The value of the books? It could be anything from eBay sales. It could be anything from heritage sales or comic link sales. Or they use GP analysis. It could be anything, I would think. Any, any tools at their disposal, they will certainly use it. Um, and that's why I say don't try to fib it because they're just going to come back and get you anyway. I was talking to Frank today, actually, he called me after school today, and he was like, uh, we're talking a bit about that. And I said, well, listen, it's not a bad thing. If they take your book and they bump it to a higher grade, like to a higher tier, it probably means that your book came back a pretty damn good grade. So, hey, man, that's fantastic. Remember that guy? The, uh, it was uh, Dave who had the uh, Ultimate Fallout uh, variant that came back in 9. It was like a forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 book. I put that through walkthrough, and I gave it a value of $15,000. I wasn't sure it was going to come back in 9.8 or not. So I got a thing in the mail saying, no, we're going to increase the value to, I think it was twenty five or 30000 And they charged, they upped, the, 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 I think it was an additional four or 500 US to grade it. But the book came back in 9.8. So, hey, who's complaining, right? Like, I mean, who's complaining? Uh, but yeah, they determined, they, they, have, they have the last say. They have the last say. One upside is that our already slab comics would be more valuable. I guess you could say that, Rob. That makes sense. But Amber is correct. They have dropped the pre-screen minimum. Wow. I guess I will be seeing some more free screen books uh, moving forward. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I think in the old days it was 15 books, if I remember correctly. I remember it was 15, uh, 15 bucks. Uh, well, there you go, guys. At what time? We've been on for 30 minutes. Um, and that's not all. There's more news coming too. I'm not ready to announce it yet, but there are going to be some changes to my own services and my fees and all that being said. Um, um, yeah, so, but I'm not ready to announce that yet. I have to get all, all, the, all the stuff in place and then I am going to, uh, not much of a change for some people. It'll be a bit of a change for others. Um, and I'm also going to be offering a new service, a new front of the line service. It's extremely expensive. I'm not going to lie. I have a lot of guys who, who ask for their books to be done really quick. Like, I mean, tomorrow, get it done tomorrow. First of all, I can tell you, no book takes one day for me. It's, it's with the humidification and the going back and whatever. It takes more than one day. But I have clients asking for next day service. So I'm going to start offering a next day service. Again, it's going to be stupid expensive. I'm not going to lie to you most people are not going to use this and i'm only going to reserve for now uh 10 spots a week that's it so 10 spots a week will get uh, will, will be able to do this fast track front of the line i'm going to call my er emergency rush service uh that more news on that in the coming weeks again i'm getting all the the forms worked out i'm getting all the logos worked out and all that and then i'll launch it on my website and i'll launch it on here as well and a little bit of a change to my exclusive press and clean probably going to be changing the names of some of these and 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 the services you get understand something right now based on every single book i get every book and i'm not I, I'm, I'm being really honest i don't think it's very rare where one book goes in once. Most of the time <laughs> at our office, the books are going in two, three, sometimes four times. And some guys some guys will say, you don't need to do that. Well, good for you. You press your way, I'll press my way. Sometimes the books are going in four times. And sometimes some books are extremely dirty and we're spending up to you know 20 minutes cleaning a book. So when you have one book that we're spending that much time on and another book doesn't require that much time, it makes no sense to charge the same price for these books. So um, there'll be changes coming in the near future. So 
You'll find out here. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you'll know when I come on here to tell you all about. It. Oh, by the way, if you if you're American, welcome. How you doing? But if you are Canadian, I actually went to my website last night and I updated. Just so if you want, you can go to thecomicdoctor.com and check this out for yourself. But you can see here I've updated, and this is Canadian. These are Canadian. These are Canadian prices. Okay. These are Canadian prices. The prices went up a little bit. Um. Okay, and these again are are kind of an indication of of the new names, the modern, the vintage, the high value, and the unlimited tiers. Okay, in my Canadian translation. Now the Canadian prices, guys. I always try to give myself a little bit of. Oh, and by the way, if you go scroll down, you've got the magazine. The two. I only use two of the two of the magazine tiers. I use high value and unlimited. That's it. Okay. And then uh, the, the reholder fees and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's all there. It's custom labels, signature series, all that kind of stuff. So go, I encourage you to go to my website and check that out under the CGC uh, tab over here, right there. Where is it? Right, right here. Okay. I added that tab so you guys can go and check that out. And you can see that at your own leisure, okay? But yeah, getting back to my Canadian, um, you gotta understand something. You know, people go to xe.com to get a, to get like the uh, conversion. That's not very accurate. It's accurate, I guess, in terms of what a dollar is really worth in comparison to an American dollar. If you really want to know, I guess, trading it on the stock market or whatever. But in reality, it's not accurate. You know, it all depends on your on your credit card. You know, is your is you're using a Ma Amex or you're using a Visa, whatever, and what kind of a of a of a rate you're getting every day. So I base my Canadian prices on, I guess, an average of what I be I'm charged each month when uh, my bills come in from CGC. Okay, and I know I have Henry out in Montreal who's encouraging me to get an American credit card to take advantage of that, but I just I have not had the time to do all that. I'm using my good old fashioned, you know, Visa Avion card, and they nail me every month for a good conversion. So these prices you see on my website are those conversion rates with a bit of a I'll tell you a buffer in my in my favor, a buffer in my favor in case there's a spike. That's all there is. So I've been burned a few times, and I don't want to get burned anymore, especially with CGC stuff. Now, these prices can go up, and these prices can go down. It all depends on the exchange rate and how things are going in the economy. So I will adjust these rates. If the if the dollar if our Canadian dollar gets stronger, I'll adjust these rates. If it continues to get weaker, I'll adjust the rates accordingly. So again, when you go here and you see if you're American and you see these prices, don't freak out. It's in Canadian. It's not in American. Okay, um, that's it. All right. Any other questions before I get the heck out of here? Uh, chat window. You will have clients bidding scalping for front of the line servers. They, they might, Peter. Maybe not when they see the price. It's not. It's not. It's going to be very expensive. Like it's. It's really. Uh, uh, it's really. It's really meant for big books. You got a. You know, a fantastic four number one. I did this in the past where I. I've. I've. In the past, if somebody had a big, very expensive book, I put them to the front of the line, no matter what. Um, but now it's going to be a whole different thing. If someone has a big book and they want it done right away, um, it's going to be automatic. If you have a Fantastic Four number one, the value of that book's going to put you, it's going to be an, It's going to be a part of that emergency rush tier. It's going to get done within five days and shipped to CGC usually within seven days of, of receipt to me. That's how it's, that's how it's going to be. Um, but again, more on that later. I, I, we'll see if it works out well. And um, and, and again, these emergency services, the, these fees, I'm trying to uh, to to branch out and offer these to, to try to generate some more income, to be honest with you, because you know what? I've got a couple of really good employees and I want to keep them. And uh, I need I need to have uh, I need to have some good um, some good options for them. Right. So these higher tiers could provide that extra little bit of income for the business to help, you know, Pay some employees that need to be paid, right? We're doing well, but you know what? I want to do better than well. I want them to live very well. That's only fair, isn't it? As a, as a business owner, uh, uh, 
I'll get to you in a second. Consume the living. Fan, a fancy pricing table doc. Thanks. I know I did that myself too. I'm pretty good on the websites. I can do it myself. John Short, I like to hit the like button. <laughs> Me too. I like I like that you like to hit the like button. Lord Thought, thanks for the update, Doc. Lord Thought, thank you for being a moderator. Um, Consume the living says, what's your thoughts on CBCS? I did a whole video on that. Uh, go over to my one-on-one, uh, -on -one, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, my one-on-one, -on -one, uh, the hell's it called? View list or whatever it's called on YouTube. And I do a whole, I do a whole friggin' speech on CBCS. Check it out. Um, I wish, I, I'll tell you what I do wish. I wish CBCS was amazing. I wish they were at least somewhat as good as CG. See, because I would use them. I would use them. I, I definitely would. I think that competition is great. I've always said that. Competition keeps you honest and competition keeps you doing things better. Trying to improve yourself to be better than the next guy. You know what I mean? That's why business competition is good. You know, uh, you're always trying to one up the other guy. And, 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 and by doing that, your service gets better and better. It should anyway, it should. So CBCS, I, I love the whole idea. I wish they were doing things to my liking because I would use them. If I start hearing amazing things out of the CBCS camp, I might try them again. But at this point, I'm still not willing to do it. <laughs> I'm still not willing to, after, the, after what I went through, I, I just don't have the time. I just don't have the time. Well, guys, listen, I think that's it. I really want to say thanks for coming out and listening to this uh, uh, this uh, video on the uh, update on not only the quality control over at CGC, but also their new tier, tier system, their new pricing. What do you think about them? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd like to hear, oh, we can still talk about this after the video is long over. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think it's fair to up the prices the way they have? The elimination of the, the, of the economy tier altogether? What, or not the economy tier, sorry, the uh, the expressed here it's gone what do you think of that let me know in the comments let us all know in the comment section below and i should be back i think there's a box on the way like for tomorrow um uh and if there is i'll try to do a last minute unboxing tomorrow if i do an unboxing tomorrow it'll be a very last minute one make sure you hit the notification bell and by the way remember those books i bought at comic alley toys well they're not all back yet but they're almost all here and when they do come here i'll be doing a video i know mike was really curious about this bad ombre to find out the grades i got on those books I know the grades. I ain't going to say nothing, not until the video. So guys, take care. Hope to see you soon. Hit that like button on the way out of here. Have a great night. All the best. And bye for now. Take care. And thumbnail is cued and see ya.